we start, if we go into executive session, does there have to be an executive session item on the agenda? Does anybody know? I want to say yes. It has to be posted. That there will be a executive session? That, that there will be an executive session. Okay, we need to put that for next time. It used to be on here. I don't know. It's all, don't all public meetings need to have executive sessions? Not all of them. If, if there's some, there's an action, there's an item that it, it requires executive sec okay. for action, then you it needs to, to put it on the meeting. yes. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not so a city secretary. We should just have it on there just in case. Yeah, I've been I've been to a lot of city council meetings. <laughs> I've kind of learned a little bit. Yes. Verbiage that should go on here, right? That's correct. That has to be right after, uh, right, what's right there? Room number three? Public yes. Comment. Oh, the language the underneath language it. Yes, like yes. You, you yes. can't come in and yes. curse at everybody. Yes. <laughs> and it tells you the time you can speak, right? There yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So it's uh, 1.34 in the afternoon. Can we call the meeting to order, I guess? Or we should call the meeting to order. Let's have roll call. Who's doing roll call? Hi. Hi. Are you I have a meeting next to you. Sorry, I'm trying to overstep here. I just wanted to make sure it's over at the couple minutes that you have prior to the roll call. Okay. Shall we do roll call? Do you want to do it? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Christina Duarte. Representative. Okay. Uh, JJ Gomez. Here. Natalia Felizondo. Here. Orlando Navarro. Not here. Uh, Viviana Frank. Here. Roberto Gonzalez. Not present. Uh, Valerie Gonzalez. Present. Ruby Rangel. Not present. Uh, Nidia Robles. Here. Uh, Francisco Reyes. Not present. Uh, Myra Hernandez. Tentatively, but not present at the moment. Okay. So going on to item three, public comments. Are there any public comments? Did anybody sign up? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, moving forward, let, uh, let, let the record show we still don't have quorum. So, or do we? Yes. One, two, three, four. Oh, you know, you're with her. You're yes, with yeah, this is what One, two, four, five. Because we have to check five. the White House for me. I checked. Uh, that's fine. We're still waiting, waiting for that. Okay. Can I, can I, on the bylaws you're checking to see if Jaime can represent? Is, is Jaime? That, or, or, what, I'm sorry, what, what yeah, I, yeah. No, I yeah, can't. I, I just read them. You want me to read it to you? Yeah. Since Christina Lott is not here, I came in her place, but I don't know if that counts for form. No. Okay. Uh, it says, directors one through five as number above and their successors will be nominated by the city manager of the city of Laredo and will be confirmed by the Laredo City Council if that happened. Um, Director 6 through 11 um, are nominated. So the only new, the two new ones that I can tell are Valerie and Mina. And according to this, we need to just... So the reason I'm asking because that's why I brought Liz with me. Liz, as you don't know, is our park planner, real knowledgeable of 
of course, all our, all our, and I want, in case I don't, can't come, she will be in my place, but she cannot vote. Is that correct? That's right now. The case, yes. Okay, but if okay, but if we have a quorum, let's say I don't come, but, but we have a quorum, she can still participate. She, she can still, participate. she just cannot vote. Right. That's correct. Right. Even if you design a representative, that person, 
Oh, no, it good. doesn't need quorum. Well, like whenever we have our board meeting, we if there's a representative that doesn't count as a board member, so it, we won't need quorum. I actually thought that you could, but what it looks like is that um, it was going to be the directors, like yourself, um, and that, uh, and and it says the city manager says, you know, whether it would be the director or somebody else. But that's either or, it's not like both of you can vote right. or something. Um, we'll create it by um, a team of about six people, but I haven't, and I was part of it, but I don't know in my heart, you yeah. know. But, uh, Anyways, we've got to answer that question, I guess, before we... I mean, I was going to call Joe about this, but I think Dr. Jeremy has done the <coughs> So does that mean we have, we have to go to council? That would mean, and like, get, get everything confirmed, right? It's only the six, because city manager can do the other ones. You mean by the six... Like that are not that, that are, are not directors that are not no six that are private citizens mm -hmm. you all work for the city and the people who work for the city are appointed by the city manager yeah. mm -hmm. why don't i do this why don't i send everybody a copy of this everybody should have one I have the one that we sent to Matt. It's asked for all the all the documents. And I'll just forward it to you guys. So we can't approve minutes, but we can listen to them. Do you? Do you? Have them? Um, uh, yeah. So, um, so they're in the in your folders on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give you a summary, I guess first and foremost, uh, you know, the new change, uh, Miss Angelica Flores is going to be uh, our new staff liaison. She's over there in the back. So we won't be working with Maria Astrid anymore. Probably <laughs> couldn't. Um, and then uh, one of the other motions we approved was uh, the executive director's pursuit for grant applications. Uh, if I'm correct, I think it was the Lamar Rudy Vagata Trust and the Laredo Area Community Foundation. And then we also had a motion to nominate uh, Myra Hernandez as the academic sector representative. Uh, so I think you know now we're going to need to have her confer. Uh, and then we also approved a motion to draft the job description for potentially hiring a program coordinator for LCUAS. Um, and that person will also you know, help move forward the healthy food system plan with the Laredo Food Policy Council. Uh, and lastly, uh, we um, made a motion to hire an accountant in order to maintain our 501c3 status with the IRS, which is basically um, our nonprofit status. So that's just a quick summary of, of the minutes. Anybody have any questions? I, I must be, from the last reading to the screen, um, I have issues to deal with in my family and so I didn't spend a lot of time and if, if somebody tell me that somebody send me the or somebody the telephone number of the accountant I didn't send you the number but I reached out and ah. me and Bobby are working with Ruben Soto oh he um actually uh, Bobby said that he needed to be excused for this meeting because he's out of town but that Ruben Soto did email Bobby a list of things that some question 
questions that needed to be asked before we give you the call. So he said to me earlier that um, he'll follow up with us as soon as he is able to get those uh, questions answered. Okay. But that's already been done. So. I know Jackie wasn't available. Jackie sent me a contact from Ruben Soto's office. Oh, so we're dealing with those same people. Oh, and then Bobby said he's still going to get a quote from Benjamin. And he was the one that used to do the accounting report. That the last time he had asked him for a quote, it was $150 a month. But that he was going to reach out to him again, and then he'll let us know hopefully soon what both accounts have to say. Ah. <laughs> I'm sorry to take over again, so thank you so much. Um, so I was advised by city manager um, to of course keep going for right now as I looked into what was provided to me by Mr. Walls um, and that this was uh, uh, opened also through the office of the state's of the secretary of the state. distribution list to all the members and if there needs to be a swearing in it will happen quickly um, with city secretary's office of course for non city of Laredo employees um, to get that done but we're good for now. So does that mean we don't have to go to council with the names of the Laredo? We're going to ask all those questions for you. Surprised that didn't get done in the past so I'm glad I was here today. Okay, <laughs> okay. so can we vote? I mean, if you're meeting your quorum in the way you were hosting in the past to get action done. Okay. Let the record show that my dad has come in and now we have the board. <laughs> okay. Um, so, just to continue with, with what we were talking about, the, the accountant, when did you say we were going to kind of know? Well, uh, Bobby texted me that today that he already received an email that he's supposed to reply tonight. Mm -hmm. So hopefully by next week we should have a quote from Ruben Soto. Mm -hmm. And he said he is going to contact Benjamin once again okay. just to compare the the quotes and see which ones. Okay, so probably by the next week. By the next week we should be able to have. Okay. Um, can I make a motion to approve the minutes? Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? No. So, uh, but you know, we can still we can still talk about the various points of the minutes, right? Yeah. So. Um, Um, the next thing that we were doing was uh, I, I know that I was probably supposed to find the job description for the coordinator. Did we find it? We have it, yes. Okay. It probably needs to be updated, tweaked. So you and I will get to that in the about today, tomorrow, and we'll send it out to everybody. So that you all can review it. Now, also, the last thing was um, did the grants come on here? I didn't see. There's, um, so I guess so that's an action item, so we'll, we'll, we'll go to the next. Can we move on? Okay. Any other, no other questions? comments on the minutes. Um, Secretary report? Do you have anything else to report? Uh, no, that's all. Uh, Treasurer's report on um, Bobby is did, did he send anything in?
So let's get the treasurer's report. Hopefully we'll have something next time. Uh, do we have to motion for that? Well, let's just do it. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, executive director report. I think you said something. Yes, you got a copy of the document uh, yesterday. Let me go over it. Uh, and we could go ahead of have for meeting with Dr. Bonta, Samuel Flores, and a couple of people here today from TAMU. Uh, we're looking at community to participate with them in. Uh, it's a solar irrigation system that they want to implement. And tomorrow we have a second meeting at Tamiyu with Dr. San Miguel and participants. So we can uh, we can continue to work on that. I'm offering, uh, uh, as part of LCUAS, I'm offering seeds and plants to start uh, your garden again. So that's, that's something that we still have to discuss tomorrow and in subsequent meetings. That's our meeting with them tomorrow. <coughs> Tonight I'm starting the Texas Master Gardener program with the Texas A&M Every Life Extension. It starts tonight from 6 to 9. I got an opportunity to talk to the agent. I don't know him in person yet. I will meet him tonight. But he's very excited that I offered the the Conseco Garden as a living classroom, if you allow me to call it that way. So it's a, it potentially we will have some classes at, at, at Canseco, right? And I'm, I'm so happy about that too. Next week, I'm attending the Texas and Another Life Extension, the Web Soil and Water Conservation Field Day. It's in Cochino Ranch near Dorito. And in a couple of weeks from now, I'm attending the United High School Curry Day. To make a talk, uh, to talk about what we do and, and our work. Uh, in terms of the farms market, uh, since we kicked out the garden in September, we have a uh, few items to offer, but we did send uh, 20 bundles of produce. And, and I'm thinking in November we will be there full year with our stand and to and lots of things to, to share. Uh, yes, I had the opportunity to submit the grant application, the OBB Trust. I decided to update the paper project uh, that we initially submitted a couple of years ago. But let's remember that when that happened, we didn't have 501c3 documentation. Now I submitted everything that we have, the 501c3 documentation, the narrative, the budget, and of course the, the, the paper project updated. I gave Bobby a copy of this. You have a copy of, of that right over there. And let's let's wait and let's see what happens. What I know is that they normally they, they normally if, if they see potential in your project, they call you for an interview and then from that you can uh, be good to go. But then um, this happened a couple of weeks ago, let's see if they call me. Hopefully they call us this time. Uh, and also we have we had a meeting to a couple of weeks ago with Dr. Pat Tyler King. Mr. Gomez was there, the Elizabeth was there, <coughs> Sabrina was there, and we were discussing the possibility of a construction of a community garden in North Central Park. We are also partnering with the city to see if we can if we are able to apply to another uh, initiative. Uh, we have our deadline next week. It's a, it's a big project and let's see if we can make it. And also I just wanted to uh, ask Dr. Go um, Mr. Gomez, I'm sorry, if we have, uh, I've been in communication with Mr. Navarro, our city forester, and we want to habilitate uh, a small uh, room or shed in the garden mm -hmm. to store a commercial fruit donated by, okay. by the food bank. Right. It's just a matter of uh, having your approval. Okay. So it just, it, I think we spoke about this. Um, it just a. Uh, it's not a. We're not gonna knock anything down. It's just to add a shed. Yes. Is that correct? I don't want to touch anything there. That would yeah. guys. Don't touch anything there. Knock anything down. Don't even move a little. You know. Don't even move. Don't even. Just to make sure what we want. So. I'm going to coordinate. Um, 
with you and, and with our construction guy, with Mr. Gallo, Mr. Gallo, okay. so you can kind of, what well, you can tell them exactly what you want, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna go take it to, all the process, make, take it to engineering, make sure we got the blessings, that we're not, everything's fine, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and put it in there, all right? That way you can have, that way you, uh, if you want, you want that, that, that fridge in there. So, the only thing that I don't want to lose that, that fridge that has been donated. Right, no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm for it. Just help me coordinate, email me, um, and two days in there too, so that she can keep it, so she should remind me, hey, don't forget about this, uh, so that we can push, get that something going for you there, okay? If, if you find me back up a little bit to North Central, yes, to North Central, you want to talk about a little bit about this, what we're looking at, where we're looking at, what we want to do there at the North Central Park? Oh, yes, uh, North Central Park, so we're trying to design a community garden at North Central Park. Um, it will have fences, uh, it'll have like an outdoor classroom in the middle, some trees, but it's going to have ADA height uh, planters um, and there's going to be um, two areas that are open and um, that, that have shade in order to do uh, gardening activities um, and it's, it's looking pretty good. Um, we're going to design it in CAD and then do a little 3D design too so we can present it to the group when it's ready. So, so it, um it's the management of the garden that gives it the sustainability. And so what I'm, what I, my concern is that it be a volunteer base, not just little plots for everybody, because as you know, people get excited for two weeks. And right. Don't, mm -hmm. doesn't, it doesn't do anything, mm -hmm. right? And so it dies. Yeah, that's the main and thing. so that's where Penseco House and all the work that LCUAS does can really help create that advocacy and that consistency in that. Right. That's the same fear that I have in terms of you because, I mean, I'm offering seeds, uh, plants, and planting, right? The first plant to start off with the garden again, but my fear is that then after that, someone has to take care of that. Uh, the garden. I mean, LCAAs can participate in community in order to we can organize one of your uh, activities. The things that we do in Caseco, we can replicate them in Tammy or in the garden, but uh, I mean, yes, it has to, it has a lot of work after the fact that, I mean, after you plant the, the So it's like, seed. you know, how to, you know, it's, it's those, Consistency of going on the, on the days to go right, yeah, yeah. to show the people, and then the people who become the volunteers, they become the first people who can far harvest out of there, right? And then and then uh, they take what they you know because they've been working it, and then the rest of it, because there's usually a lot, can go either to the farmer's market or it can go to a designated nonprofit or something like that yeah no i agree totally completely and i think that will help that community garden successful is the amount of people that go to that park and uh believe me i get a lot of phone calls just because we move trump uh, a lot because because something moved in that park we move a tree or something happened yeah i mean you'll be surprised how many how many calls we get and i think once we push it and we announce it and we do it right and, and Get the advocacy, I think there's enough people there that will adopt that, you know, that, will, that will So that, that's why LCUAS is such a helpful tool when that's concerned. Right. Is somebody um, going to be in charge of the garden? Or like, where is it at Central North Central Park? Like this is the, 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 the new ADA playground. Or on Sweden, it's on Where the pools are on? Okay, right. oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right around the weather pool, right? Which we call the main entrance, which is called the trailhead, mm -hmm. where the pavilion is. To, when you look at the pavilion to the left, we have the new ADA park right next to it. Is it going to so, be um, gated? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and do you have somebody going to be in charge of that? Like, do the volunteers want to go? How is that going to work? Yeah, That's maybe pink code, pink code access. Also, access. the programming. So, uh, in that meeting, if I may add, yes. um, I believe we decided that in February, um, Dr. Uh, King wanted a uh, town hall where he could get the community's input, which is going to be an important part of 
the sustainability and success of, of that garden. Um, but he also asked that, you know, Elizabeth will be doing the designing of the garden, but Jose and I will work on like the programming of the garden, which will entail the management and how we get leadership, right, which will be important. Um, and, and I think LCOAS will be um, yeah, I mean, I think that's great. I just think that before it's come, like done, I we just need to make sure there's someone already <coughs> have, well, that has that that is gonna take over that like leadership or that is gonna guide like the volunteers. We, we, like, I just we so, cannot just do it <coughs> with no one in place or nobody's no, it's not the same. That's actually one of our objectives in the food policy conference. Um, yeah, um, at least. Do you have to do you bring with it? Any of you have something already in place? I'm just wondering if you're just in phase one, which is a design phase. Yeah, she, yeah she did a she did a sketch model similar to that she told Dr. King and it's really nice. Uh, maybe we can email it to them or next time we meet we'll meet we'll bring it. Uh, yeah, it's just a it was just a paper sketch, so I still need to put it in the computer and uh, render it. And, uh, so it'll be a minute. But um, first, oh, we had I had like four or five different sketches, and so everybody looked at them. And so every, at that meeting, um, looked at it until we picked one. And the one that was chosen was the one where you're coming off the street. Um, there's going to be like a central uh, garden, uh, not a central garden, a central like classroom outdoor like seating area. Like when you first come in from that street, so that's like the first thing you're going to see. And then like all around there's going to be uh, like um, uh, raised beds. And then there's going to be on the left, there's going to be like two areas that are like uh, covered covered areas where you people can do like, um, they, they can do like the outdoor nursery activities. It's also a little bit like the green, green space in Houston area, based on the galleries. Did you get the idea from any specific? Um, I've designed community gardens before. I did one in Austin called the Festival Beach Food Forest. Okay. Um, and so I did one in Austin and it was, it's a great success. And that one is led by- I'm familiar with it. Yeah, I, I was, I was a- It's, the the, it's actually a picture in the, in the five-year plan. Yeah, that, that was that was my project. Uh, so I was a for, uh, so Mitch uh, Mitch was the landscape architect, and so he had uh, the series of berms that water water it, and it's next to a floodplain, so it, it she flows down, but it stores water in the little berms. And so I I was the first landscape designer that did the plan. So I set all the trees and I put all the plants and I did like the, the concept for like the vineyard walk. There was like a vineyard walk that people walked through. And then uh, it's kind of like a weaving garden, but uh, I actually built that path myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, the and I, I guess just so that we hopefully are able to keep this vibrant and sustainable. That's why, um, like um, the. The work that LCUAS also, if you look at in the bylaws, is is to help manage all of these things that are like manage in the sense of best practices in terms of how you are able to um, have community supported agriculture that is, you know, working for the benefit and always sustained throughout the year because as we know, it's difficult here. The one I, when they, there was a whole slew of community gardens that were planning with the best intentions before your time um, that died because people had their own little plots and they said, this is my plot, that's my plot. And then they got tired of going and that was the end of it. Where was that? Uh, Slaughter Park was a big one. Um, so I know the one that's struggling and I don't know if it still is is um, I don't know if it's still is the one uh, Faskin over yeah we're still we're, we're still trying to get that one back up and going again 
that's where his um, expertise in developing the volunteerism for that and making it a volunteer garden, right. not so much. When, when I went there, it was like, this is my plot. This is my plot. Right. You know? And by, who, by the elderly over there? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And so, um, yeah. Anyways, that's not to say they don't survive, but this is the best way of making it happen. Anyways, um, so where are we? we are, is there another meeting scheduled for, is there like a task log for this particular garden with Linda? So we don't have another meeting scheduled, but I think we had our individual tasks. I know you and I have to work on programming and making sure that whatever we do in that garden it is in Align, aligns with the five-year plan. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth is going to work on the renderings, I think. Yeah. And like, yeah. And, but we, we do have to push it to schedule. Well, if we're going to have a public meeting, you've got to have a date. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's coming up. So uh, are you all pulling it together, or do you need help with that? Um, with a public meeting? I mean, that's something that... I, we'll get there eventually. Uh, right now, I still have to just come up with some... Uh, just some to render designs. Um, okay. I just have sketches right now. <laughs> no, well, what I mean is like the handling of the public meeting. That Dr. Oh. King was going to uh, um, arrange that. Oh, okay. it's, it's his district. But I don't know. We should yeah, check that. It has an agenda. So how would, how do we? There, people are going to come in. How are we going to tell them about all this stuff? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. us, the story of, of the project and. How it's going to work and all of that. Um, Dr. King also asked that we do a presentation on the five year plan as well. At that uh, meeting. That meeting, yeah. Okay. That's, the brief That's February. We don't know the date yet. We don't know. He, he just said laid out uh, a month, right? It was, he said February? Yeah, February. Okay, great. Well, then right now it's, it seems like it's the planning process once you. Um, like it gets closer to I don't know, December, let us know if you all need anything with with the meeting or anything you all need, then we can help. Because I know at the beginning, when it's barely the beginning planning like stage, it's a little bit hard to get to like those answers and everything. But once, like once you're, if you guys are already meeting and you have it um, already like under control, then for the next step, just let us know if you need any help. Great. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you for this. I, I, if you would please, like at your meetings, like put the people who were there and a little bit more meat on the bone as to what is what you all discussed and what's next. Okay. Um, so there's like a progress report as we move along in all this. Um, so we're going tonight, sorry, to the yes. after Okay. Are we good? Any more questions for? That's why I have to. Oh well, no, we have the baby face. Oh, the baby face, the right? Yeah. The who? The baby face. The baby face. Ah, okay. Why don't you all? Um, can you say something about the veggies and stuff that you've been getting? It, can you talk about? Is it like are people? Going to the farmers market. Yeah. Well, we do have. Um, we do the farmers market uh, happens once once a month. It's at the outlet shops. So we've been there for two years. This October, it has been two years. It's been very successful. I we have grown a huge amount of uh, clientele, customers, vendors. Um, right now, I feel like the the farmers market has a a good flow. That honestly, like we get a good amount of, of, of attendees that, that attend the, the farmers market. Um, of course, we do have our struggle with farmers. We don't have many, but uh, we have Palo Blanco that participates. We have Bella Gourmet. We have uh, Chapon Creek. We have LCUAS that takes their produce. We do have another uh, another vendor that she does herbs and she, it's like a basil and, and rosemary, you know, and some herbs that she grows in her, in her backyard. She does attend and she does sell, 
majority of the time she sells out. So she, I mean, there is a group of, of following that go specifically to get their produce. I know um, sometimes it's a little bit hard to convince a farmer that there's a farmer's market inside the mall, like uh, inside the outlet. But it has been very successful. Like I mentioned, people do get the produce. We do see people, elderly people, around the downtown area that go specifically for the produce, for their eggs, and for their honey. Um, so, and they know when it's, they already know have our dates written down, and you, we see they're already our regulars. The man, Jesus Gonzalez, he goes and talks to them with his wife in the wheelchair, so, I mean, and goes and gets his, his stuff. So, we've seen that it does, um, we do get a lot of people from the north side that attend the market, but a lot of elderly around the downtown area that do attend. So it's been really good. Um, again, produce is um, what LCAS provides. That's why it's very important for us to, to have that produce there. Um, and then our veggie fiesta is coming up. So we had veggie fiesta was an event that was uh, an idea that was brought to us by Valerie and Sara, another another farmers market vendor. They came to the Rhythm Wing Street and we collaborated. Farmers market, we made it. Uh, we just brought the veggie fiesta to our event to make it better. We already have a uh, good amount of uh, clients that follow that type of, of product. So we ended up bringing vendors from out of town, vendors from the Pearl King, a vendor from Austin that have this type of product they offer. Um, to our surprise, our San Antonio, the Pro vendor sold out and he said that he has never sold out at the Pro. So I mean, that was a huge thing for us, you know. He had like a dairy uh, creamer and, you know, like different dairy free, dairy free, yeah, dairy, dairy free, I'm sorry, uh, dairy free creamer. Um, so very, very excited. We did have, uh, we want to say more than a thousand people attend the veggie fiesta. We did see a bigger amount of, of attendees from our regular market. We have gotten data from the outlets and we do see on the Saturdays that there's a farmer's market between 500 to 700 more people attend the outlets on a farmer's market Saturday. Um, and then the day of the veggie fiesta, we had a, like about 1,300. So there was a big amount. Um, a lot of people were interested. A lot of people, we already announced our save the date for our second annual, which is gonna be January 20th, same day as the farmer's market. And um, we're getting a lot of good feedback, a lot of good response, so we're very excited about that. We want, I mean, we want LC, LCODs to be a part of every market, of course, but I also understand that there's the low the low season, you know, like, like this past market, it was a couple of herbs. They still so well, November, <coughs> December, January, February, that's good months. Mm -hmm. good we have lots of things to offer those. Yes. Yeah. So we're excited. I know I know November, December, I know those months we have <coughs> we get our pictures and we have those tables full of produce. That's what's going on with the farmers market. It's been very it's been very successful. And if I may add, this is a great opportunity for you guys to connect us to anybody that you've ever whether shopped from or know that is a community member who's super interested in things like this. Um, we're trying to bring vendors from Hebronville, from Brownsville, from San Antonio, from Austin, a little bit of everywhere, which is what our focus was last year, right? To kind of just give a variety to the you know farmers market vendors that they're used to and they're well known with. We're trying to bring different uh, vegan pastries, you know, not dairy creamers, all sorts of things. So even if you've maybe not connected with them but have their information, that would be so, so, so great. We're trying to just make it bigger and better. Do you have a save the date or Yeah, we do. It is on our social media with the Rito Main Street. Okay. It, was already, it was released this week. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I do want to mention, going back, we are bringing out of town vendors, but we also want to look for more local vendors because what we want to, we have, we're going to have guest speakers, we have chef demonstrations, but um, one of the committee uh, points that they brought up was that they want also simple things that they can find here local. Like, yeah, it's great that we bring someone from San Antonio, but then when are we going to get the products? Like, we need people local that can offer those things. Simple, simple, simple recipes, simple things that can um, 
that the community can learn and get and take from our veggie fiesta. I know even if it's as simple as a recipe with olives, for example, you know, we might not have a vendor that offers the olives, but if that's just something that is leading someone to eat healthier or get a healthier snack that has to go get it at HB, but that's something that they're taking and learning from, from the event. So, I'll tell you what I do on the Chill Farmer Market. I go to the Guadalupe B Market for the Vice um, by Arkansas. Mm -hmm. For lunch, yeah. um, <laughs> so those are the places that I go. Do they participate? Because I've talked to them and they say no. No, even, I mean, no, it just depends. I don't know, but I, I do believe that they don't know. Yeah, no, we, we really, I don't honestly don't think I have any vendors that that are at the pulga, that are at the farmer's market. And if you're talking what type of vendor, like produce, or you're talking about food? No, produce. produce. Okay, because we are. They've been, they, they've been in the ag business since I was a little girl, because we worked in the farms. Mm -hmm. well, when Slaughter Park was a farm, when <laughs> San Isidro was a farm, we were there picking the thing, the thing with our farmer's market is we are a certified farmer's market, so one of our requirements is for 75% of the farmers have to be, uh, they can't resell. So some of the, the, those, pro, those um, companies, they buy the produce and then they come and sell it. Our farmer's market, you have to grow the product, like either at a farm or at your home. Um, we're getting there because right now we, if we're thinking, okay, if I have five farmers, then maybe the sixth one I can consider bringing someone, and that would still meet my seventy-five for my farmers market. But new farmers are recently, like I can, this is recent that I'm getting five farmers. You know, like before it was two, so it was very difficult for me to be able to bring someone. It would kind of like um, it would go against what the farmers market is. Again. The other one is uh, the Blancas Bee Market, I think. I was out there. Mm -hmm. And there's also one, and they do grow their produce in the valley and transport every weekend. They come over here. That may be another option, especially if you're trying to bring that yeah, to other areas. Yeah, that would be. Do they need? And they were from Laredo, they, they moved to the valley because, okay. again, you don't have ag like as much as you did at one point in Laredo, so, but in the valley they still yeah, have Yeah, and some we can get information like that, like if you were, if any of you was yes. to run, uh -huh, or run, run through someone that does that type of, of, of business, you can definitely send them over to me and I can make sure they are growing it because a lot of times they do say yeah we're growing it and they just bring it from there you know but so it's our job to go and do a site visit to make sure that but if if that's the the if that's the truth that they are doing it like that we're more than happy i mean we need more farmers we want people to ask for for produce at our farmers market what's the process of getting approved as a vendor or farmer so you said a site visit what else is uh, for a visit? farmer yeah um, well it depends you do fill out an application that it's available on our website and then um we review the the application if you are a farmer uh we just need to do a site visit to make sure that it is at your at your your place you're growing it and you're selling it and then from there um, you're good to go and what about for vendors the other vendors, are, they also go through the same uh, process, the application through our website, and then it just depends what category you fall under. Like, so the application will tell you if you're an added value vendor, if you're a Texas cottage, which means you're more like baked goods, or there's a certain, there's a list of things that can fall under Texas cottage, so we have that list as well. Or if you're a nursery, you sell plants. I mean, it just depends. If you're a nursery, we just need to make sure that they have their their uh, license. their license because if not, they will go and find like the nursery. So, okay. is this published somewhere that we could just send them to that website? At the Red Street, don't or yeah. yeah, we have the If you go in the Red Street, in the beginning we have usually the flyer and the application, and then you can also go to our farmers market tab and you find it there. Sorry, if I may, the last thing is, I noticed that it's January 21st, how we considered making this part of our WBCA events and functions that 
because they are, the resource is already there to market to outside our city. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's it. Just they that charge you about two thousand dollars for something three hundred dollars. What's the what does to make it an event? To make it an event part yeah. of our WBCA as a city, and then obviously because part of it is obviously exporting that information to other communities that can increase participation. Maybe generate a little bit of revenue to then be able to play. Yeah, I haven't considered or thought of that, but um, we can have a and conversation. It, and actually, is it competed with Menlo Fest? I think we are the week. We, oh no, we did actually last week. Last, week, last year was the same day, mm -hmm. but we realized we had a successful event that it's just two different types of different, crowd. Yes, like that right. crowd is very complete. <laughs> like it's very different. <laughs> Um, it's very complete, like it's very different. So it was one of my worries when when the planning and I and I found out that it was going to go. I was like, oh my god! But then I started thinking, okay, no, it's a different crowd. We had a successful event, so I, it it didn't. No. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, do we have a few post council update? Yeah. Um, so, our our last meeting, we were talking about our next steps for the health and food system plan, and that would be having a meeting with the city manager. Uh, we should be having a meeting with him. I talked to um, council member Melissa uh, Cigarroa about scheduling a meeting with him for the purpose of reviewing what's already been done um, in the plan by different organizations that are involved in, in the food system and food policy council and to go ahead and discuss how to direct city resources in the most appropriate way to those projects and programs that are already um, working towards those objectives and goals. So that's where we are at. I am still missing um, feedback from participating organizations in the Food Policy Council as to um, when, I mean, as to what they are doing um, as, a, as an organization that's in the plan. Uh, that's due November 3rd. Um, I will be calling and texting. I'll work on that. I have it sent it though. If you could just send a list or um, whatever way is easiest to you to get that information to me. Uh, but that's that's all I have. We'll just I just need to reach out to um, our council member to make sure that we get a meeting scheduled with the city manager because the um, city council did kind of put a deadline on themselves to make sure that the whatever work is being done for the plan is actually moving forward. So this meeting will be that sort of accountability to make sure that's happening. Um, I. We talked about the District 6 garden. Um, there's also a grant due November 3rd as well as the HFFI grant that um, LCUAS is planning to apply to. It's like a week and a half away, so you know we have a lot of work to do. Um, but it would be for capacity building, for um, offering finance. Um, financial support to retailers, uh, food, food retailers. So what we have in mind would be the same project that we were doing the MHM grant with, which is the Espeta neighborhood. Because as you all know, it's a food desert, and so any type of assistance that we can give to them to have some kind of um, market, mercadito, like some type of, of access to food, would be better. So that's kind of what we're going towards. And that's all I have. Um, when's the next policy council? It is uh, November the November seventh. The election. And that is yeah. And that is uh, it'll election. be in person. That's in person. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah. I already reserved the room. So. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on that point and comments? Okay, moving along. We're going to start number nine since that should be, that should be uh, can we strike that from the agenda in the future? Um, so what's, what's your name? I'm okay. handy. I'm handy. Okay. Easy to remember. Okay. Uh, I love that name. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Uh, 
Can we strike number nine from our agenda since we already have an academic sector? Right? Yes. Okay. Moving on to number 10, um, I think we've already had a grant update, right? Does everybody agree? Okay. So we're going to uh, move on on number 10. Uh, number 11, discussion of possible action on update on Lucas office space inside Ben Cycle House and the placement of the fridge. I've already heard something about the placement of the fridge, but um, Coach, did you? Yeah, we're going to. Sorry. Gonna, we're, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, we're going to. We're going to. I'm going to send my construction guys so we get together with uh, Mr. Moderner so we can decide where we're going to put it and make sure that we're doing that. Uh, we get it done. And we, that's an outside? Yeah. It's an outside. That's like the house. Next to the uh, be air conditioning. The house. How? Because it's going to get to 150 degrees in that space. I mean, that's the problem with that. With keeping it outside in a storage house. Then, then we'll have to replace it. I mean, it'll have to be insulated in air conditioning. Yeah, that's right. Even we see what Gal says. She's she's pretty good about see what will be best what we're looking for. Okay, I mean that it's just a little unit. It's not a big deal. It's just to keep the like it overheating completely. Um, but what about the? Are we going to have a meeting on the Canseco uh, House having an office in there? Was that something I thought? I mean, it's something we have to. So what? Do, so it. I guess we're going to have a meeting with the city manager. That's something that can be brought up. And then we can bring it up then, right? Yeah. Okay. I guess what we need is kind of like a a memorandum of agreement. Or I have to tell you, I'm I'm a little. Like if you read the bylaws, this is an extension of the city, the LCUAS is like a, created as an extension of the city for the purpose of doing the work that is mentioned in the bylaws. So uh, I don't know, it's like they're leasing, they're going to have a lease, I guess, I guess we can work it out. When did you say November 1? 7 is the food policy oh, council no, I'm talking about with uh, so the city manager. City manager. You know, I haven't heard back. So. so so sometime in November, let's try and do it in the first two weeks. Is there a date that we're aiming for? Huh? Do you are you hoping for a specific date or timeline before Thanksgiving? Let me see. Yeah, definitely. Sure. I mean we've got a lot of things to resolve and and also to like show them that there's been a lot of work done. Okay, we'll bring it up at that, at that meeting. Um, so, discussion with possible action on update on job description for a program coordinator. We found the job description. We are going to uh, make some notes and then send it out to all of you. Okay? Um, Discussion with possible action on update on searching for an accountant bookkeeper. We already got to that, right? Yes. So we're done with that. And we're actually done at 2.30. One hour. <laughs> okay, everybody, uh, motion to adjourn. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, everybody, motion. Yes, okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you for coming.